Chuck Robison and this is our show What If It Really Works and I'm joined beside me by Karen Robison and sitting across from us are Paul and Diana Ray and what do you want to tell them about Paul and Diana Ray? Well, it, it's almost unspoken because whenever you run into anybody in Austin and you mention Paul Ray, they say, THE Paul Ray? <laughs> you know, THE Paul Ray? So Paul is a very famous uh, personality in Austin, Texas, and has been for a number of years. A large number of years. So we know you came from Dallas, Paul. So, so you can't hide that, and then you came here. Yeah, in the summer of 1970, we moved here. I went to school here for three years at UT, from 60 to 63, kind of a sit home, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, started playing music when I got home, and I worked, I had all sorts of jobs, working in clothing stores and Justice Man shopping, and, and uh, working at LTV Electronics, working at Sears, just jobs, but I still played music at night because you could back then. Uh, the gig was 8 till 12 because they didn't have late closing. It was 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock on Saturdays. And so I would be able to get up and go to work the next day because I wasn't up so late. But that's uh, what I started doing down here and just fell in with the right people that I knew from Dallas that had come down here. and. Uh, we all kind of lived out our dream of playing in a blues band. And I uh, was real lucky to do that and then had throat problems that uh, made me kind of find something else to do. So luckily a friend gave me a chance to do radio and I just grabbed all of it and wrote it for 36 years playing uh, rock and roll rhythm and blues solo music on the radio. So anybody from Austin that sees this video is instantly going to know you by your voice. You've got a remarkable voice that I understand the University of Texas has trademarked. <laughs> you can't use it anyplace else. <laughs> and since we're out in the country, the dogs walk in and out of the That's door. Right. Right? The, dogs in and so it. the dog is fine. So you're you, really they've almost trademarked your voice, and everybody in Austin recognizes your voice. And um, and the name of your show is Twine, Twine Time. Time. Yeah. And it runs through the uh, uh, NPR station KLRU. Is, is no, that right? KUTX. K KUTX on the University of Texas right campus. Uh huh. And uh, what? J Karen and I know about you, Paul, is that you probably are the single best repository of information about music in the 50s and 60s and 70s. You know all of the music. Well, that's impossible to know all of it, but I, I have retained a lot. <laughs> and there are, there are uh, people around that, that pride themselves on knowing all the minutiae of what Miles Davis had for breakfast. And, you know, stuff that, you know. but uh, I kind of just say, you know, this guy used to be in this band or this person, yeah, whatever. And uh, add something to it, the music, so they appreciate it more. And, and you know, I don't know, like, I, I can't even think of an example, but it just saying this this person is from so-and-so and this, like, this kind of music and uh, these, you know, just try to give them a little, added to something so they'll appreciate what they're listening to, hopefully. A lot of midnight phone calls. Hey Paul Ray, who did <laughs> who quit, did that song about love? I quit doing trivia. I'm still getting those things. It's not emails though. <laughs> saying, yeah, that's true. Hey Paul Ray, about two years ago you played a song about black guys singing about this girl and going, that's about 100,000 people that they're talking about. <laughs> But I think, hey, say, we got a bet going here, Paul. Would you tell us uh, who? We got five dollars on this yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Try to answer your question. If not, I'll say sorry. I can't pull that one up. <laughs> Send me the five dollars. Yeah. But yet you have. You, when when you get on the, we listen every Saturday night. We we just you know we just we know when you're going to be on and we tune in. We're junkies and, and we're junk. We sit there and we rock with it and we sing with it. And just you know, it brings back our childhood. Soundtrack of your life. It is the soundtrack of our lives. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, and I know, certainly know we're not the only ones who feel that way. Yeah, we, yeah. quite a bit. And Austin, Austin's kind of a, a place where they like the real thing more than the glitter, more than the, uh, you know, the, the fame. It's, it's the music right. and the people who made that music. Yeah. And some of them are characters. Yeah. In fact, most all of them are characters, like Little Richard and, and, and you know, the wild ones. And the great singers like Bobby Bland, great guitar players like B.B. King, and just try to get as much of that on the air as possible. And I've been able to do it for over 30 years. And, and you're backed up in the Austin culture by the fact that Austin describes itself as the live music capital of the world, right? Yeah. And you've been instrumental in having that be identified with Austin too, right? Well, yeah, we, we had um, some people that went on to fame from here that uh, did it because people appreciated the music. And there, were a lot, there weren't that many clubs when we started playing here. But uh, it's grown, and we get every, about every decade a new influx of people come running into Austin, and we start all over again <laughs> and try to re-educate them. So, so when you came to Austin in 1970 from Dallas, mm -hmm. East Dallas, as I recall, yes. uh, when you came to Austin, you started a band, is that right? Well, actually, I didn't start the band. Uh, it's one that had come from Dallas. Uh, Jimmy Vaughn and Phil Campbell and Jamie Bassett and myself had a band called The Storm. And it was uh, actually The Bricks. Uh, with the start of it back back in Dallas, and I got to know all these guys, and um, so we we wanted to play blues, and we thought or knew that we could play it in here. We couldn't in Dallas. You you can get lynched for playing blues in Dallas, but we uh, <laughs> we found well it was that way. I mean it was that way, and so down here it was a lot uh, more. Uh, you know, it took us in and let us do it. I and mean, we played clubs in East Austin. And then uh, finally, uh, I got with Jimmy and uh, played bass with Jimmy after uh, I quit singing uh, in Dallas. And we moved down here. He already had a band with Dole Bram Hall and Denny Freeman. And, and uh, so anyway, they were playing at a black club, the I.O. Club in East Austin. And I'd go over and sit in with them. And then Jimmy called me one uh, Monday and said, hey man, we're playing at uh, this biker bar called the One Night down on Red River, 8th and Red River behind the police station. <laughs> and uh, uh, we don't have a bass player. Our bass player won't play for past the hat gigs. He wants $10 guaranteed and the whole band made $10, maybe. <laughs> you know, maybe if some rich biker was in there. But, uh, I said, uh, what are y'all gonna do it? He said, we're just playing John Lee Hooker and Jimmy Reed songs. You can do it. I got a bass and an amp, just come on down. And I was with him for three years. And 